rinse off with fresh water. And they were extremely concerned. And they go, here we are with the birds. So we're looking at a lot of bird droppings on the beach. There are seagulls here. There are lots of them. They're out in the water. And what we're being told by the county is that this bacterial closure of this area is from the birds. And uh, I, I could see why this might be a problem, but I cannot believe that co consistent beach closure from bacteria is solely from birds. I don't, I think there are other things to look at. And I wish I felt that the county was looking at it really seriously. Alternatives. You know, when the county formed the uh, alternatives committee and they went around and around and around, we had no idea they were talking about alternatives as being recycling and things like this. Because to heal the ocean, alternatives meant an alternative place to take the trash other than Tahegas. Um, expanding into the back canyon, where the back canyon is all going to drain into the front canyon that's online, did not constitute an option to us. Uh, if Tahegas is closed, that means that they have to maintain that mess that's there. We've talked to the county about mining it. We've talked to, because what's there, that mess is there, has to be managed, and it has to be dealt with. That has to happen. But in the time that they were talking about alternatives, Hill the Ocean was suggesting, you know, we might have to go out of county where these super duper line landfills, they're lined, they're triple lined, they're equipped to receive trash. There are these, these landfills that are, are serviceable by rail. And we said, what's the matter with the road? There's a railroad track that goes right by Tegas right now. And a train went by while we were there, and we thought, wow, why they could just load this <clears throat> up here? But the, the point is, you say, well, we've got to do with our own trash. Well, there are some places that are not equipped land-wise, as long as we're involved in this ridiculous, it's going to be ridiculous to us at some point that we're bearing trash they're, they're in the 21st century, that there is a, there's a way to deal with trash. But as long as, it we're, as we're doing it this way, we need to increase recycling big time. Sa the city of Santa Barbara, there's no recycling for apartments and businesses. And we're getting into this at Heal the Ocean. We have an office downtown. We have to drag all this stuff ourselves into our cars and take it to our own recycling bins at home or to the environmental, the city, community environmental council recycling. There's not enough recycling. It's not serious yet. So here we are going into the Barone Ranch. The gate is open. Many here in the Barone Ranch and there are lots of beehives here. Did the county buy this to, uh, Go in the honey business? I don't know, sweetie. What do you think? Bees. We've got bees here. There's some avocados over there. Why did the county buy the Barone Ranch? We'd like to know. You know, we put Tahegas in where it is, in this coastal canyon, at a time we didn't know any better. And it's such a huge problem now because we didn't know any better then. But that's no excuse for not doing something about it. And big problems tend to get this reaction of it's, just, it's unsolvable. But it is solvable if we first recognize that this was not a good thing to do back then. This is the 21st century, and it's time to start doing something about it. You know, there are environmentalists today that say, oh, you know, that." It, it, used to be the Shumash and the abalone and the otters all got along. We can't go back to those, that state because we're all here and we've all created these things. But we have to start fixing them. And to get a perspective of what we've lost with Tahegas, Jeff and I went to a neighboring canyon that was just pristine, and it's La Honda, which is J.J. Hollister's ranch that he has just deeded over to the land trust. Good for him. And Jeff and I went in there and there were biologists counting species of birds and, and there still had trout in the stream. And so we went to look at it just to get a perspective of what we've lost with Tahegas. Well, 
Good afternoon, you guys. How are you? Good, how are you? I guess you guys are doing a bird count? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but have you seen anything interesting today? <laughs> yeah, we've seen all kinds of things. Yeah. What kind of birds have we noticed? I noticed you have a, uh, some bird seed there on the ground. I <laughs> know uh, that's not our bird seed, actually. Hmm. Yeah, no, we've seen um, chirps and hawks, chirps and hawks, uh, uh, red tails, turkey vultures, common ravens. Uh, canyon rams. Canyon rams, house rams, Buicks rams. Quail? Quail. Just saw some quail rams. Any leaf bells? No, no leaf bells. Did yeah. you see the yellow orioles? We saw bullocks orioles. Hooded uh, down here. Hooded oriole. Yeah. yeah, tanagers. You were uh, from the uh, Santa Barbara Natural History yeah. Museum? Yeah. yeah, yeah. my name's John Storer. John, we've met. Yeah, yeah we have. We met uh, yeah. Paul Collins. Paul, nice to meet Hi. you. Yeah, Paul. we met for the, uh, the Gaviota Coast group that was right. here. Hi. Hi, I'm Hillary. How is it? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So the things that you were looking at, the wildlife and the uh, things you're looking at for the museum, or the, it's the, all the, the wild animals, the look, it's wild really, it's a tent. JJ's provided us the opportunity to yeah. come in here and really look at this drainage and see what uh, what wildlife he has in this drainage. And it's an opportunity to see what a relatively undisturbed drainage uh, system looks like. 